Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, let's go. I said, I was glad they said it to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's an honor and a privilege to be in the house of God this morning. Hallelujah. We can be anywhere else, but thank God we're in the house of God. Hallelujah, where we can worship and magnify our God. Where we can give Him the glory and the honor and the praise. Let's give it to Him this morning. Let's get our mind and our hearts to go to Him. Hallelujah, get everything out of the way. Hallelujah, He's the only thing that matters. Hallelujah. We come to worship and magnify Him. We worship and see how He says to the Lord. Sweet the name and the name of Jesus. No sweet.
just feel old. Our bodies are like, hey old man, how you doing this morning? And I'm being a grumpy old man and I ain't answering. And some of us are tired. Some of us are weary. And some of us got a great blessing this weekend. But there's still more blessings to be given. Amen. There's still more blessings to be given. I will tell you, and I don't normally do this, you know, but I went home last night. Immediately the Lord gave me a word. I turned to my wife, I said, you know what this, you know what this word means? I know it's the Lord when it's big words. <laughs> Look, you know what this word means? She's like, no. I said, did, 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 did this happen to you? And she's like, well. And I found out, no, it, it's not, it's not exactly what I thought it was. The Lord began to grow it. And he said, I'll have a people. I will have a people. Amen. Here's what I know. There are churches out there that don't know how to praise anymore. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just saying they've lost their praise. There are places out there that have lost their worship. They've lost their prayer life. They forgot what fasting is all about and kind of get into the flesh. Brother Walker, we can't be that church. We won't be that church. We cannot be that church. I will say this because I mean it. No. Listen, if I ever pick on you, it's because I like you. If I don't pick on you, it's I don't like you very much. And if I ever tell you something, it's not because I have fluff that you need to hear. It's because you need to know I mean what I'm saying. Yes. Right. Sister Madison, God has blessed you and ordained and anointed you. Amen. I know I'm not... You, you probably don't know this. That's, that's not some new revelation. But I need you to know that we know that. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful that Brother and Sister Madison, these beautiful children, are here. They've been a great blessing to us. I hope we're a blessing to them. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on the Lord. You all right with that? I come out and preach your cries all the time because I can't help but to cry in the presence of God. You ain't going to catch me crying any other time. you ever think of that song? What it really says? Lord, I stand amazed at your presence Surrounded by your mercy and love Are you? Are you that amazed? 
Do you understand this morning you're that surrounded? Amen. Is that another part of my life? What? Let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than you, Jesus. Let me tell you this morning, there is no one higher than Jesus. There is no one higher than Jesus. Praise be to God. I'm telling you, the anointing of God is moving in this place. Praise Jesus. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Jesus. Somebody's going to bring a sacrifice of praise this morning. Somebody's going to bring a burnt offering this morning. Somebody's going to bring a worship this morning. But the word of God says you got to bring it yourself. You gotta bring it to the storehouse. You gotta bring it to the temple. You gotta bring it to the come on, bring it up to the Lord this morning. Get a hold of the Lord this morning. He's waiting for you this morning. Don't, don't you worry about anything else. We've got people in places that, that, that everything else is handled. We've got people where they need to be. You just get your mind on what God wants you to do. Where God wants you to be. Where how God needs you to be with him. Just get a hold. That's where we are this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's worship. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pour out an offering of the Lord. Let's go, 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 let's go
you knew it all. You came here to learn. And you're going to, oh, I know all, no, no, trust me, you wouldn't be here if you knew it all. <laughs> That's the church God made us. We're training. We're training, child. You're going to learn stuff you didn't think. 
you're going to get into stuff and, and, and not get offended because it's super spiritual. You're going to deal with spirits. Listen, you might as well get used to them. They're coming. So you might as well get used to having to deal with them. Not be afraid of them. Not get all bent out of shape. Not the church fall apart. You're going to have to be like Elijah and everybody else. Say, I rebuke you. I can't get lost. I got stuff to do. Amen. You're going to be able to look at it and somebody and say, I rebuke that spirit of Jezebel right now. I rebuke that spirit of Ahab right now. I rebuke that lie of tongue you got right now. I rebuke that deception and, and, then, and all of that. You know what I'm saying? You, you've got to get to that point. To where it's common for you to be able to live and say, I ain't playing with that the lot of spirit right now. I'm going to go to somebody who really wants to pray for. The lot of don't want to pray for. She just wants to get your attention off of what you're supposed to be doing. Where's this coming from, preacher? Apparently God, I don't have some notes. Y'all know I barely have notes. Listen. God wants to educate you then equip you. That means you have the tools to do what you need to do. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I will not have you over, my brother. You need to be educated. Then you need to be consecrated and, and, and set up. Then you're sent. And once you're sent, you don't go there alone. We're going with you. We're going with you. So don't you plan a journey without me. I've got my bags packed already. I've had them since day one of starting this church. In the living room in New Washington, Indiana. I've had my bags packed. By the way, some of y'all might as well get your bag packed because this isn't the last place for the Rock Family Worship Center either. We're just here for a little while. Amen. We've got another building coming. We've got another place we're going to grow. Not because we want something big and elaborate, but because God needs something to build the people into. Amen. That's what it's all about. We're building the kingdom of God. We're reaching souls. New souls. I want new souls. I want more souls. I want broken lives. I want the drug addict to come in. I want the prostitute to walk in. I want the pimp to walk in. I, I, I want the drunkard to walk in. I want the liar, the deceiver, the fornicator. I want them all to come and get salvation. Don't show me a church that doesn't want them. Show me a church that is about his father's business. That's what I want. Hallelujah. A church that has nice services, good music, popular musicians, great orders. I don't want to be known as a preacher. Oh, he can preach. He can, he can preach revival. Man, what well, great! Can he get a soul into the into the pulpit? Amen. Can he get a lost heart to come to the throne of God and submit? I don't need accolades. I, I need I need soul saved. Yes. The Lord has given me a word for you this morning. I'm gonna preach it. Y'all right? Yes. Amen. If you would this morning, turn with me to the book of First Peter chapter two, starting with verse number one. First Peter chapter two. My voice is in and out. I hope you'll bear with me this morning. Get behind me. Preach with me. I want to get loud, but I feel like I've swallowed a couple frogs and they're fighting over my throat. That's what happens when you shout a lot. First Peter chapter 2 starting with verse number 1. First Peter chapter 2 
starting with verse number one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Hey, stop saying I hate this. Did y'all catch that part? First Peter 2, 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. I can preach for a month right there. Because i got to tell you, sometimes we're a bit hypocritical. We'll tell everybody else, don't you say that, but we'll look at them and we'll say, well, you know what I mean. I didn't mean it the way that I said you not to say it. I just meant it right now. That's just how I'm feeling. That's called a hypocrite. Amen. Amen. And we envy. I wish I had what you have. I wish I was as talented as you are. I wish I was as blessed as you are. I wish I had your health. I wish I had your wealth. I wish I had your... Let me tell you something. You don't know what kind of hell they had to go through to get what they got. And you don't know the circumstances that God needed to bless their lives. And he has blessed you greater, but you don't understand that God has been merciful and kind and blessed you. But here's the thing. Then he says, hey, stop all of the evil speaking. What's been coming out of your mouth? Who have you been speaking against? He got touched in this last week, but in this, the last couple days, but the Lord dealt with me to say this again. When you speak anything about any man, listen, I, we, we reserve this a lot for pastors, and, and that's because pastors get a lot of it, and that's, I get it. But if you speak against any man or woman of God, you are speaking against God's ordained. God's anointed. If you're speaking against any brother or sister, I don't really like the way she dresses. And I, I think when she does her hair, and I think she's trying to show off her hair. And I think, it, and you know what, when he wears that, and he's, up, he's always strutting his stuff. Listen, why are you paying attention to their stuff? Well, it's just out there. Well, your eyes have to be out there for you to see it. Amen. Yes. How about you get your eyes on the godly things and you won't see anybody strutting their stuff and puffing themselves and... Well, hallelujah. We're all right. We're there. <laughs> As newborn babes desire to steal milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Hey, if you have tasted the sincere milk of Almighty God, in other words, mercy and grace, you ought not to worry about all those other things or have it up in your mouth or out of your mind and in your thought. You ought to get rid of that garbage like the Word of God said and move forward. Amen. And I ain't preaching on none of that. To whom coming as unto living stone is allowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be of disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are chosen generation. You ought to get excited right there. Yeah. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous life, which in time past you were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Mercy, dearly beloved, I beseech ye, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from the fleshly lust which war against your soul. 
having your conversation. You ready? Honest among the Gentiles. I can change those words this morning. Honest among your work peers. Amen. Honest among your spouse. Honest around your children. Honest around your family. Honest around your friends. Honest in the grocery store. Yes. Whereas they speak against you. You notice what it said? It said when you're not speaking honestly, they're going to speak against you. Amen. But they're going to speak against you whether you're speaking honestly or not. They're going to speak against you as evil doers. <coughs> They may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. In other words, now they're going to go, wait a minute. What they're saying is true. And I'm going to come and I'm going to connect with that God that when he comes back, I get to go too. Amen. 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 This morning for a brief period of time, I'm going to preach to you on this thought, the oblation of a nation. The oblation of a nation. Brother Walker, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful for your presence in this house. Let us be sensitive to your presence, sensitive to your word. Help us to, to acknowledge everything that you have for us, Lord Jesus, and receive it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You may be seated. Last night when I went home, I went home and I was ready to go to sleep. Like everybody else, we've worked hard. Three weekends in a row, we've been doing something for the kingdom of God. And many of you have worked tirelessly. You've been here, you've cooked, you've prepped. We prepped, I think, for 100 plus people for, for food. And that's why we have food today, because we're still the 100 plus left that still need to eat that food. So praise God for the food. Amen. But praise God for those who prepared and worked tirelessly. To do those things. Thank you and God bless you. We, we, we made arrangements. We made sacrifices, if you will, to make sure we were in the house of God as, as we needed to be. And, and we got here early and we stayed late. As a matter of fact, Brother Plunkett left on Friday night. And about 1.13 to 1.20, he sent me a text and he said, Brother, we just made it home. And I had to send him back a text saying, so did we. And he said, whoa. And I said, that's preparation. That's what you do. When you've got an event at the church and you're working for the kingdom, you got to stay and get the work done. The cleaning has to be done. The work has to be done. All of the efforts have to be fulfilled. You've got to build the kingdom, work the kingdom, fulfill the kingdom. Even when nobody else sees you, it's still kingdom-minded. Amen. If we we'll fulfill the word of God and continue to work, God can bless, God can unite, God can do the miraculous. It's when people that are good do nothing that will, that's when things begin to fall apart. So it was okay that we got home and won something at night. Whoop de do. Yeah, you get tired in body. But God always gives us time to rest. Do you ever notice that? When the Bible says he gives us beloved rest, it doesn't mean when you die, you can sleep. I've heard that phrase a couple of Well, when you're dead, you can. No, I'd rather not. I'd like to have some sleep now and still live. And I firmly believe that the Lord allows us to live a little bit. Amen. But when, the, when I got home, the Lord said, Oblation. I'm like, Uh huh. And? And he answered again, Oblation. Got it. Don't. Educate myself. Gotcha, Lord. I've got it. I will go educate myself. And at first, I misunderstood it with oblation. You can be seated if you like. At first, I missed it with oblation. And an oblation is when they go into a portion of the body and they put almost like a mesh in areas. And they'll go in because the body is having a bleeding issue. And they'll bring that probe into the body. And when they get in there, they'll extend this mesh and it opens. Have you ever seen one of those wires in the old space heaters? And, and you'll hear that vibrate, that 
and you're like, what's going on? It's because the electric is connecting to the wires, and those wires don't just get heat, heated up because of, of the electricity going in. The electricity power causes those wires to vibrate so much that they begin to heat up so hot that it begins to allow the heat to come out. And, and so when that happens, it, then if you're not careful, and we always... As kids, we were all, don't touch that heater. You're going to get burned. So uh, in the operation, what happens is they extend that and, and it opens up. And once they know it is hit the tissue it needs, they send a jolt of electricity through there and it burns it. And it fuses it so it stops it so it can't leave. It deadens the tissue so the tissue cannot live anymore. And I said, Lord, the, oh, this is what he said. I didn't say up, up, ablation. I said oblation. He said, I don't want to kill anything. What's happening to the church today is the church is oblating itself, oblating itself. I want it to oblate. I said, help me, Lord. He said, fine. An ablation is something that kills off. It strikes off the blood flow. It deadens it. It makes it so it no longer works the way I created it, the way I made it, the way I needed it. And some people say, well, I needed it because of this or I needed it because of that. But I could have healed that. I could have made that whole. I'm not looking to burn out the church. I'm looking for the church to come to me and be set aflame by me. I'm looking for the church to come to me and be lit up by me. I'm looking for the church to come to me and give me an offering that is pure, that is holy, that is just, that is righteous, that is perfect. The definition for oblation is an offering given by preparation and by physically bringing the offering unto the Lord with humility and for his honor. Let me say it again. Well, that didn't, that didn't make any sense to the definition you said earlier. It's a different definition. Follow me. you got to follow me. An oblation is an offering. Everybody say, I brought my offering. Offering. Show it to me. Don't you, don't you get $2 out of your pocket. That's not what we're talking. We're not there. Show me your offering this morning. Raise your, just, just put it here. There is an offering that you were supposed to bring unto the Lord this morning. And what we what we experienced in part this morning, some of you have already decided, I'm bringing my offering to the Lord. I, I've come to give unto the Lord. I've come to magnify. I didn't come to see what I can get from Him this morning. I came to see what He can get from me. I came to see how He can get and receive from me this morning. I need Him in my life. I need Him in my experience. I need to get a hold of Him for the rest of my day. That's an oblation. Yes. Not an oblation. You see, an oblation is the offering that given by preparation. That's the key. You can give me something. Now listen, I can give you a wonderful gift, brother. I, I can come up there. We'll do the tissue thing again. I can walk up and I mean... Brother, here, here, there. There's my offering. It's, it's, it's pristine. It's clean. It's, it's all yours. That was prepared. Right. You need Kleenex. Come on. There was no preparation in that. Amen. That was just here. I'm giving something to you. The Lord says sometimes we just give stuff to Him. In the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Leviticus, and in the book of Numbers, these three books, oblation is mentioned. Nowhere else in the Bible is it mentioned. Just in those three. I'm sorry, and in the book of Daniel, those four. And, and, and oblation is, is spoken about. And oblation is when they had to prepare the grain, or they had to prepare the herbs, or they had to prepare the flour so that they could bring it unto the temple of God. Now here's what had to happen. There had to be physical activity, physical preparation that prepared them 
to bring what they needed to bring to the house of God. I wonder what your mindset was this morning when you got out of bed. I wonder what your mind, oh, I'm broken, I'm tired, I'm sore, I'm aching, I'm painful, I don't feel good. Like maybe I ought not to go to the house of God. No, honey, you need to get up, get your best in the best of and say, nothing will stop me from going to the house of Almighty God. Nothing will stop me from praising my King. Nothing will stop me from being with the people of God. Nothing will stop me from prayer. Your oblation. In other words, what did you prepare for the Lord today? Or did you just come to see what he prepared for you? A good father will always prepare for his children. A good father will always want the best for his children. But no good father will look and just say, well, listen, if you do good, then you're going to have great things. And if you don't, you won't. Good luck to you. Well, how do I be a good husband? I don't know, gentlemen. How are you oblating your children? How are you teaching your children to find a good man of God? I don't know. How are you oblating your daughters? In other words, how, how are you teaching them? How are you showing them that there has to be preparation? There has to be sacrifice. There has to be things done right and in order. There are people that are going to treat you right, love you right, do you right, and there are people that are going to do you wrong. Right. Right. You see, there's preparation that has to be made. And that preparation has to be sacrificial, by the way. That's why, because you don't feel good, you come to church anyway. I've got a headache. I've had a headache for three days. I can't come to the house of God. Why can't you? Because you haven't been preparing to. You've been preparing not to. That's why. You've already made it up in your mind. Your headache is bigger than your God. You, you already decided that your foot ache is bigger than your God. Your, your back ache is bigger than your God. Your, your cold. You know what? I'm sorry. I don't mean this rude. I'm not asking you to come to church and make everybody sick. But you wore a mask for COVID. Why can't you wear a mask for everything else you think you're going to spread? You went to work with that mask on and you still worked. Why can't you come to the house of God and praise God anyhow? Why can't you come into the presence of God and praise God? Why can't you go about it? No, because you're not making preparations for that. You're making preparations to skip out so you can maybe watch the podcast or the live feed if you want to, but you'd rather be on YouTube or Hootube or whatever tube you want to be or watching the show or snoring some more. Come on. Oh, but I was sick, Pastor. Whoa, you were so sick that you were too sick to listen to the Word of God. You were so sick that you were too sick to get a hold of the grace of God, the mercy of God, the truth of God. Something's wrong. What is wrong is you are blaming yourself. That's right. Instead of having oblation in your life. I got a little ways to go. Y'all y'all have to see. <laughs> when you bring an offering, it is given by preparation. But there's more to it. If I prepare the offering, Brother Madison, I can't give it to you to offer. It's my offering. How would me giving him my offering bless me? Why is it that you're so willing to give your blessing to somebody else? Why is it nobody? Do you think when I come up here and I shout and I dance, I've got a few spine. I'm not supposed to jump and run around. I, I'm not supposed to jig and jump. I'm not supposed to be over to bend over. But by the grace of Almighty God, He allows me to do it. I'm telling you, I've come up here to give my offering to God. I've come up here to obey before my God, to praise before my God. I don't need you to do it. I need to do it. Because an, up, an oblation means not only am I bringing an offering and preparing the offering, but it means I have to physically do it myself. Yes. Yes. Nobody's going to worship for you. That's right. Right. Sister Vesta Mangan's birthday today. I think she turns 98. Ooh. And I bring that up not to who was it. I bring it up for this. That woman of God turns to many people and says, listen, honey, if they're not going to come up here and get their blessing, let you and I go up and shout and get their blessing. I 
That's what I want. Listen, if you're not going to come up and give your offering to God, if it's prepared and ready, I'll come give it to God. I'll come give God everything I've got, everything I have, everything I've got to I'm not going to sit there like I'm up on the wall. I'm not going to sit there like I'm trying to figure out whether I want heaven or hell. I'm going to get up there and I'm going to give God my everything. That's what it's about. That's why we're here. We're here to get an impression under the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's not enough just to sit in church service. It's not enough just to come to church. Hear me now. It, it's not enough to come up and say, now I lay me down to sleep prayer before service. I want to come up here. I want to walk with people who have a prayer life. I want to walk with people that can lift me up too. I want to walk with people that can support my weight when I'm weary and what I'm on. But I also want people that I know that I am loving and willing to walk and pick up as well. I, I, I want to walk with like-minded. I want somebody to lead me that's got a bigger brain and a bigger walk with God than I've got. Amen, yes. If yes. you think you're smarter than me, no, by bigger brain, I mean God is educated. Yes. Don't go, don't start getting all worldly on me, okay? We're not in the flesh. Right. I want somebody that says, I will be a covering for you. I will be a blessing to you. I will encourage you. I will uplift you. I will correct you, but I will do it with love and with mercy as God will do. And I will help you become what God has called you to be. Amen. Yes. That's what I want. Praise Jesus. That's what I long for. Amen. That's what I have. Before he was ever the bishop of AIM, Brother Walter is my pastor. He has the authority to call me on the phone. If he wants to call me boy, he can call me boy. He can pick up that phone and say, what are you doing, boy? Nothing. Pastor, what, what are we going to do? How are you, sir? I'm well. And he can say that thing he's about to do and he can tell me details. Yes, sir. He said, you ain't doing that. You know, no, sir, I'll let him know we're not doing that right now. You know that building you were going to build? Yes, sir, you're not building that building. Okay, we're not building that building. Well, once you question it, why would I question the man of God when God has spoken to him? Because if they're not the man of God in your life that listens to God, that is looking out for your soul, that is standing on the wall, calling out that all is well, or that you're in danger, if they're not that person in your life, then you really don't have a covering, do you? You have an entertainer. And I ain't in show business. Almost went there. <laughs> You're laughing at me. Your pastor's been in two movies. <laughs> Technically three, but we won't talk about the third one. I, I ain't guts. The zombie movie called The Dead Next Door. God help me. That's funny. It means more than just bringing the offering into the Lord. It means bringing with humility and the fear and honor of God. Did you know that? Where's your humility been? Humility is not how busy you are. You should be so much about your father's business like a 12 year old Jesus was. That people ought to wonder where you've been. Amen. Amen. But oblation also means something brought near unto the altar. Not near as I'm close, but literally near as in on top of. You've got to bring your offering, your oblation. That offering, that's what oblation is. It is an offering of purity. At its purest form, you've got to bring it to the altar of God. You have to do it. Nobody does it for you. That's why nobody can get the Holy Ghost for you. you got to get the Holy Ghost. Nobody can do it for you. Nobody can teach you to speak in tongues. Nobody can give you words to say. That is a gift direct from Almighty God Himself. And it comes and it takes control of that unruly 
holy tongue, you just got to let it flow. Literally, when you uh, come in oblation, you come near. Near is a short distance away in some people's biblical time. But when it comes to the Bible, near literally means immediate. Your oblation is supposed to come God to God immediately. You know why there's anointing oil at the back of our door? Does anybody remember why? Because the Lord told me to tell you that they used to anoint their heads and their brows before they ever entered into the kingdom of God. What was that? They, they told, David told us that the, the uh, uh, priest, he said, because you did not prepare yourself, because you did not appoint yourself, uh, anoint yourself, because you did not sanctify yourself, was his exact words. He said, because you did not sanctify yourself the fourth time. Everything got messed up. Because you didn't do God's word the first time. Everything got messed up. David didn't do it the first time. David should have told the priest, hey, forget about the ox cart that I told you to put it on. God told us to put it on our arms and carry the thing. You got you fellas carry it. Then there would have to be no Uzzah who died. Right. 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 So who's dying around you because of your disobedience? What reflection of your life is reflecting the wrong thing? Where, where are you missing your oblation? Your offering. Not offering when I get there, but immediate offering. The reason we get the anointing oil, you'll see. Some people just do their head. I do the top of the head and I do the brow. And then I make sure I repent on the other side of the wall. Of anything that may have I missed. That I hadn't repented over before. When you have oblation, you don't wait to come to the house of God to repent so you can get in God's house. You repent right then and there and you get it out of your life. That's because oblation is immediate offering unto the Lord. Lord, I have sinned and I am not worthy. I present myself to you. I repent. I turn from my wicked ways. I will not fulfill the sinful nature of the Gentile anymore, but I will walk in worth and truth and value for your people. People are watching you. If they only see you repent at the house of God, they never see you repent. If you say a word that's off, they're going to look at you to see what you've been saying. You should immediately be in repentant mode because you were in the flesh mode a moment ago. Right? Y'all yes. still with me? Yes. Amen. Yes. You need to immediately say, God, forgive me. Oh, I'm so and look at them. I'm sorry about that, Lord. Please forgive me. They may look at you like you're a squirrel who lost the nuts. But I'd rather be looked at like an idiot and a fool. That somebody that's missed out on what God had for me. I, I'd rather be looked at as somebody that, 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 is, that is just on the dark side and, and a little bit weird and a whole lot weird. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'd rather lose my job than miss out on the things of God. Yes. It literally means immediate. Next to nigh is the old way of saying it. He was nigh him. In other words, it wasn't, oh, we were close. It was, there was no room between me and him. How close are you to God this morning? Did you wait to repent, put the oil on at the door? That's a safety precaution to make sure the sanctification was done before you got in. That was the backup. That was not the first. That was not supposed to be the first spot. The first spot was immediately when sin came in. Here we go. What's your oblation? Immediate. So in other words, there has to be a sacrifice immediately. In other words, you got to have an immediate praise, an immediate worship, an immediate repentance, immediate forgiveness that you can speak and cry out to a merciful, graceful, loving, kind God. But that doesn't mean I'm sorry now, but I'll do it later. Yeah, mom. It seems to be happening in the church. Yes. God, we love your mercy and grace, like the song said. But we're going to take advantage of it today, if you don't mind. Surrounded by your mercy and love. Well, we talk about the mercy. 
And God's a big God, and He created everything, and He really loved us like a father should. My father loved me, so he went and got the belt. Amen. Yes. My father loved me, so he used to say, Troy Allen. Uh huh. In trouble now. He used the middle name. It's all over. I'm a dead man. Yeah, amen. Amen. There's some things that weren't warm that are fixing to get really warm in here. <laughs> Yes. Immediately, Troy Allen. Who? He used the middle name. I'm a dead man. Amen. Do I look dead to you? No, because a father can discipline and correct without killing you. But what you do can kill you. Yes, amen. It can kill your soul. It can kill your spirit. It can kill your mind. It can kill your flesh. It can kill your ability. To be a blessing and a, and a light to the people that need you. What about your family? What about your friends? What, what about your parents? What about your grandparents? What about your children? What about your spouse? What about your neighbor? You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. I love him as long as he keeps his trash off my yard. I love him as long as he don't rev his engine at night. I love him. No, that's, that's not what the Bible said. Bible said, love your neighbor. That's right. Huh. You got to give an offering up for your neighbor. Who knew? Come on. Yes. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Whether you realize it or not, whether they've ever talked to you or not, your neighbors are watching you. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking to you, Gentile. <laughs> They're watching you, Gentile, to see if this Jesus you're so fanatical about is real or not. That's why they went to you for prayer. Yes. They don't talk to you any other time, but they know you go to church religiously. Yes. Hey, won't y'all, can you pray about something? You might, no, oh, honey, that's great. Yeah. They might never talk to you again. <laughs> but whenever they start seeing the answered prayers, do you, you know how they get answered? Not because you did one of those quick anti-offerings. Anti anti-oblations Lord Jesus go ahead and touch it Lord like I do on Facebook when I see that post of please pray oh Jesus touch it Lord you've been praying oh yeah I asked the Lord to heal your cancer I had a two second miracle but some mama's on her face pleading the blood of Christ on her begging God to intervene and intercede. Well, they got a mama to do it. You're supposed to be the mama. You're supposed to be the nurturer. Aren't you supposed to be the bride of Christ? Aren't you supposed to be the bride of Christ? Aren't you supposed to love them to life? Aren't you supposed to pray through the Holy Ghost? Aren't you supposed to pray through the salvation? Aren't you supposed to pray for signs, miracles, and wonders of all of them, healing to be upon them, that they walk the walk and talk? Isn't that you, bride? You're called. You're chosen. You are. You are. Leviticus 2 and 1. I'm getting ready to read a whole lot, but not yet. Leviticus 2 and 1 says, And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it, and put frankincense thereon. Let's go on to two. And he shall bring it to Aaron's son's priest, and he shall take there out his handful of flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar, be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. What did I just read to you? The preparation of what we're supposed to prepare before the Lord. Your praise ought to be pure. Your worship ought to be pure. Your shout ought to be pure. Your glory ought to be pure. Your run ought to be pure. It ought to be for the glory of God. It ought to be for the kingdom of God. Not something you just do to get in the flesh. Not something you do just to let people know you're spiritual. You ought to do it because you're doing it for the glory. We don't run because we feel like it. We run because we're glorifying God. We don't shout because we just want to shout because we're shouting for the glory of the Lord. It's not a show. We need to teach our children it's not a show. 
You're doing this for Jesus. You're not doing it so mommy and dad sees you. You're not doing, doing it for the grandparents who see you. you. You're not doing it just for the laugh. But we want you to learn to run around the church at church times. Sad children. We, we want you when the preacher's preaching and, and you feel like it's something we're shouting and everybody else is getting it. We want you to run around the church. Make sure it's for God. But when it's done, when it comes down, sit down. Teach them. Teach the way of the Lord to our children because our children are the church just as much as we are. Yes. 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 Teach them to pray. Teach them to anoint their own heads with oil. To use that oil properly. Amen. To get it. Put it on like they ought to. Repent like they ought to. Make sure they're pure. No, I don't know what repentance is. Teach them. We've got people that rarely come here. They'll still walk in and get that oil and put it on everyone that's head. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't even come. They don't sit. They're living in all kinds of sin. But in obedience. But we got saints. Oh, I'm busy. I'll do that when I lay my stuff down. So you're the saint and you're the example. But you got to lay your stuff down. Do me a favor. If you need it that bad, I'll put a table at the door. That way you can put your stuff down. And then put your sin down. I'd rather you put your sin down and quit worrying about your stuff. That's pastor right there. Don't you come in here and sit your stuff. Don't you get on this platform if you haven't sanctified yourself. Don't you do it. If you haven't sanctified yourself, you got no right on this platform. But you think that platform's holy. Yeah, I believe if you stand on this platform, you better be holy or you better get off. Come on. Amen. Amen. Just, and listen, we don't just let anybody on the platform. We just don't let anybody get up here. We just don't invite anybody to listen. Either you'll pray up, stay up, sanctify, fire the Lord, and live in it right, or you're not. You got no business here. If you're praying in the sin box, you got no business here. If you're allowing your family and in your home to go to the pit of hell, you got to get into the kingdom. There have been preachers that wanted to come here and preach. And I love them, but I said, no, thank you. Because the home needs to be sanctified, and you can't bring that behind a pulpit. Because there are spirits that come from that stuff. And guess what? I didn't invite it. And if you did, take it back. If you did, take it back. I need you to be oblation. In oblation. I need you to bring purity to the Lord. I need you to prepare your offering. I can't wait to get to the house of God because I'm going to obey today. I can't wait to get into the kingdom. I can't wait to get to the altar. I can't get to get my shadow. I can't get to get behind the word of God. I'm going to obey today. Are you? No. Are you? Isaiah chapter 1. I'm going to read a lot. I'm going to start with verse 4. I'll shorten it down for you. Start with verse 4, and I'm only going to read to 31. Well, now we got to calm down. If you can't shout over that, you went to sleep. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4 through 31. You all right? Yes. Verse 4 says, And a, a sit, listen, listen how it starts off. Don't, don't get ahead of me. It starts off like this. All right. You ever heard Pastor praying up here sometimes and the Spirit of the Lord gets on him and I just begin to cry out? Have you? Oh! It's the burden. Yes. It's the pronunciation of a burden. It's a pressure like no other pressure. All you can do is, oh! Yes. Then it's followed by the, oh! Why? Because it's an expression of anguish. Yes. And the scripture starts right there in verse 4. Oh! I'm in anguish. He says, A oh, sinful nation. My God. A people laden with iniquity. The seed of evildoers. Children that are corrupt 
church children. He didn't say adults. He wasn't talking about just the parents. He was talking about all of them. You're my children and your children are my children and they're as corrupted as you are. Think about that burden on the Lord. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. In other words, everybody says backslidden is not in the Bible. I just read it to you. They are gone away backwards. In other words, they backslid. Why should you be stricken anymore? Hey, why? Why are you in the condition you're in? Will, ye will revolt more and more. A whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. Hey, you've gone so far and corrupted your life so much that not only is your heart messed up, but your head is just as messed up. Not only is your head is messed up, but your heart is fully corrupt. You think vain things. You feel vain things. You long. You know the heart is a longing condition. You long for vanity. You long for evil. God help us. You yes. would revolt more and more. Verse 5. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head. There is no soundness in it. You ever heard a preacher say bless them from the top of the head to the soles of the foot? The cursing goes from the soles of the foot to the top of the head. My feet hurt. Amen. Amen. From the sole of the foot even to the top of the head, there is no soundness in it. There's no stability. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. In other words, there's no healing in this place. There's not even a place of a little bit getting better. Everything is downtrodden. Yes. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage and a vineyard, as a lodge and a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. In other words, you're just in the midst of all the muck, the mire, and the evil. Yes. You're that quaint little thing yes. in the middle of it. But you have no value because you're too minuscule. Except the word of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. In other words, if God hadn't been the God that he is and didn't love his children like he is, all of Israel would have been wiped out. There would be no Israel today. All of it would have been gone. God would have allowed it to be destroyed by his, their very enemies. And the Bible says, by his mercy and grace, by his goodness, he allowed a small remnant to remain. Because had it not been, he would have killed them all like Sodom and Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice to me? In other words, hey, why did you bring me a sacrifice of evil when I sought of you a sacrifice of righteousness and good? Let me ask you something, church. How is it we can come up in the church house knowing we've got sin in our heart, knowing we've got sin in our mind, knowing we've been lusting or longing or desiring or playing with things or watching things on YouTube or on whatever those things are that you're watching? Why, why is it you can justify those things? Why is it you think you can have a dirty conversation with a filthy individual? Why is it you think you can look up and start up and play around and mess around? Why is it you can long for more and more and more and and God has blessed you with plenty and mercifully. You, you have to understand, God's not sitting here playing with you. God's not, God said you should be thankful for everything you've got, everything you've ever received, every blessing in your life. But you're always wanting somebody else's blessing, somebody else's giving, somebody else's house, somebody else's car, somebody else's wife, somebody else's husband. You know why that husband looks so good around his wife? Because she makes him look good. You want to know why that wife looks so good around your husband? 
Oh, well, women don't want to hear this. She makes her look good. He makes her look good. You know, a husband doesn't make his wife look good. Oh, can't stomach her, man. She gets on my nerves. You better shut your mouth. You're speaking against the bride. You're speaking against your. So you just invited cursings into your home. You go ahead and speak against your bride. God doesn't play when you start doing that stupid. You go ahead and speak against your husband. God doesn't play when you start speaking against. I don't care what. I don't care if he gets on your nerves. Communicate with him. Educate him. Love him to life. Don't beat him down like a dog. That is the world's concept, not heaven's concept. And that's the same thing we're supposed to do to our bride. Yes. Let me ask you something, gentlemen. Do you want that kind of a saucepan to marry your daughter? Let me ask you something. Do you want that kind of saucepan to marry your son? You better start thinking about what you represent. I've had people in my life that I now love. They were stupid when I met them. I don't mean that rude. They were stupid. They thought they could just come up in my life and tell me. You're telling the wrong person. I've lived this life. And guess what? Then they had a daughter. And then suddenly their back got a little bit straighter. They cleaned off their shirt a little bit better. And started walking around like, you touched my daughter, I'll stomp you. And I said, that's where you are. I'll stomp you too. <laughs> now he gets it. Now they get it. Oh, wait a minute. That's what it's like to be a dad. That's what it's like to be responsible. That's what it's like to be a man of God. That's what it's like to do righteous and holy and just and true. That, that's what that, okay, I, I, I better step it up. I better, listen, when you are in yourself evil, you are allowed evil on your children. Yes. What do you think's going on in the United States and across the world? They're allowing the evil and they're letting the evil fall on the chip. It's not acceptable. It's not of God. It's not of Lord. Yeah. There's an oblation of praise that we're supposed to be bringing to God. I'm almost done. Bring no more vain. Let's jump down to verse 13. Bring no more pain, no more vain oblations. Oh, there's that word. Vanity. Vanity. All is vanity. Don't you bring the oblation. This is not the oblation. I'm going to go. I'm going to give it to the Lord. Oh, everybody else is up there. That's an oblate, not an oblation. That's a high school play. That's a game. You know, Sister Schiller, I remember preaching the word and seeing the elders preach the word and people would walk in that door because the anointing was surrounding because people prayed through and stayed through. People were praying for the souls and fasting for the souls and fasting for the lives of others like they had never had been, been before. And the preacher get up and begin to preach the power of the word of God and somebody just hear a little bit of it and they walk in and they walk through that door. They didn't walk in and stand in the back and wait for everything to be calm and, and pressing and, and an invitation to come. No, they walked in the church because they were under the the unction of the leading of the Holy Ghost and they walk right down the aisle and they fell on their faces as the preacher was preaching the word and as the singers were singing the prayer and they cried out to God God save me make me whole again restore and let me come back to heaven's gate amen. Amen. who told you that was over come on who told you those days were over? This church is on a 31 day fast. We're going to be fasting and praying until March 31st. Or whatever, May, February, what month we in? Yeah, that month. March 31st, we're going to pray, we're going to fast, we're going to seek the face of God. We're going to see souls come in that door. That's what it's about. Not just prayer, just love. But God, bring the souls in. Bring the lost in. Bring the dying in. Bring the death in. Bring the bring them all in. That's where we're at. Almost done. Almost. Only 80 more minutes. Don't bring your plain oblations in. Don't bring your plain sorry pretend sacrifices in. 
Don't you bring your unprepared sacrifice to him. Bring your prepared and immediate sacrifice. So when you meet him, the offering is there. And he'll take what is his. He'll take what is his. If it's all been blessed and purified and meant for his glory, it's his. Now let me caution you right now. I feel this quickened in my spirit. Don't you bring. Don't you bring an offering to the Lord that you did not intend for him to have at all. Because I don't want you to fall at anybody's feet dead. Oh, that was then. I've been telling this church for years. You wait and see. Somebody's going to walk through that door who has promised promises to Almighty God and the Holy Ghost is going to hold them accountable right then and there because they lied to the Holy Ghost. There will be no exceptions. There will be no preservation. There will no, be no in-between. Well, brother, I don't believe it happened. Then why did it happen when the church started and you think it can't happen today? It's going to happen. I'm telling you. I'm warning you. I'm cautioning you. Don't you lie to the Holy Ghost. Don't you lie to Jesus Christ. Don't you do it. You will be held accountable. Some of you come up here time after time and you pour out, but you have not submitted. Don't you say, God, I give you all, and then walk back out here and go back in the sin that you know you were doing before you got here. You're lying to the Holy Ghost. I've come with a prepared offering. I'm giving you it all. I'm done with it. And you might as well get up and reach into God's pot of what you've offered. Put it back in your pocket and walk out. Come on. I offered you, Lord, but I'm taking what's mine. I'm giving it all, Lord, but, but I'm not quite ready to let go. I'm giving it all, Lord, but I'm not sure you can handle it, so I'll work on it until you get less busy. You're his child. He's never been busy. If he can create the whole universe in one day and do all these other things in all these other days, you think he doesn't have time for you? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. He's been ready for you since the day you were born. You were in his heart. You were in his mind since way before your parents said, let's have a baby. Well, that was a mistake. Get in line, honey. Everybody's got a story. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. You can go through all the motions. You can have all the services. You can do all the hip and hop and jip and jop and everything else you do. But if it is not pure before the Lord, it's just an act. It's just a high school musical with a bunch of out of tune singers. Amen. Amen. They are trouble unto me, the Lord says. You're distracting me. Leave me alone. I am weary to bear them. Listen. God says, listen, God's taking your sacrifice. You're giving a tainted sacrifice. That's right. Sit down for a minute. Listen, years ago, I was not a good guy. I was not in church. I was working construction, and there was a guy who was the most irritating kid I'd ever met in my life. And one day on a job site, we found this, this hot sauce called nuclear tonic Satan hot sauce. There were warnings all over the bottle that said, one drop, do not eat without a physician's consent. I wasn't nice then. We went to Taco Bell that day, and he had to have it. Before he ate, he always went to the restroom. <laughs> So I was going to put one drop on his taco. And the fellow next to me bumped my hand. Bloop. And here he come, and I panicked, and I put it, and I threw the bottle. And he had thought he put his sauce on his taco. And I honestly thought I killed him. 
I literally saw his face turn five or six different colors of red. Sweat pour off of him like rain. And him grabbing everything he could to try to get the heat out of his mouth. And then he just fell. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to jail forever over hot sauce. Who would make stuff this hot? This is stupid. Out of the foolishness. Out of the stupidity. Why are you taking chances? Because you're tainting your offering to the Lord. I'm just going to give you a drop, Lord. I'm just going to give you a little bit. Come on, you made me. See, you know I'm a, I'm a kidder. You know I'm a work in progress. Yeah. You know whose God's works in progress are? Those who are progressing. Yes. 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 You can't say you're a work in progress if you're always going back to where you were. That's not progression. That's recession. You've got to learn. You've got to walk this walk on a daily basis, on a minute by minute, second by second basis. The tempter's going to come, but most of the time, the tempter's you. There's no devil walking over you trying to plague you like the angels come and protect you. That's not happening. There's no enemy that's going around and saying, Oh, I gotta, we gotta, we gotta gang up on them. That's not what's happening. It's your flesh you haven't got under control. That's why prayer and fasting is necessary. You gotta get this old flesh and say, You don't need what you think you need. I belong to God. You're not getting what you want. I belong to God. That weakness is because I belong to God. I'd rather be weak in the Lord than strong in the world any day of my life. That's where we're supposed to be, church. Almost. I'm almost. Bear with me. And when you spread forth your hands, listen to this. Listen to what he says to somebody that is not giving a proper oblation, a proper offering, a prepared offering. He said, I will hide my hand, my eye. That's right. Come on, brother. You say, when you raise your hands, I'll hide my eyes from you. Yes. Wow. I'll hide my eyes. Yes. My God, could you imagine God speaking that to you? When you raise your hands, I'll hide my eyes from you. And when God means something, he says, Yay! And right after that, he says, Yay! When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Yes. He says the reason why is your hands are full of blood. Oh, I didn't care with anybody, preacher. You killed in your own soul. You're murdering every life that you're supposed to touch and affect from here forward for the kingdom of God. So tell me, whose soul are you not killing? What blood's not on your hands again? You're supposed to be the witness. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from behind my eyes. Cease to do evil, he said. Learn to do well. He's teaching you how to get healed, folks. He's teaching you how to get back to him. God Almighty's teaching us right here. Wash your hands and make them clean. Put away the evil of your doings from my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. We don't want to seek judgment when we did wrong. Hopefully God didn't see it. Hopefully God's not mad. Of course he is. He's your father. He created you to be pure and holy. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes. Not be you somewhat, and hopefully I'll let you in. Amen. Yes. He said, be ye perfect. Oh, my goodness. As Christians, we hear all kinds of people sugarcoat in that slot these days. Yeah. Be ye perfect. Oh, we can't be perfect. Nobody's perfect. That's scripture, too. You know what perfection means? 
You literally are supposed to be better than who you were yesterday. You're supposed to be growing in the Lord every day. But that means before he ever said, be ye holy and be ye perfect, he said, put away your evil ways. So when we're talking about, about being perfect, we're saying, I've already gotten rid of the evil that I was doing, the sin that I was doing, the, the ungodliness that I was walking in, and now I can be made whole. I can be perfect. Perfection is in the Lord. That doesn't mean, oh, you got everything figured out all the time. It means you lean on God every day and he can teach you. And now you're better than who you were yesterday. But in order to get into perfection, you have to repent. You have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking tongues. And you've got to be a disciple for Christ every day of your life for the rest of your life. Amen. Now you can get into perfection. Praise God. He said, learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. How many other oppressed people are you helping? Well, you don't know my circumstances. Isn't it funny that the bum on the street will give them, will give you half of their meal or the rest of their meal because they know what it is to go without, but we that have all the food on the table and all the cupboards, we just can't find anything to eat. People that got one pair of clothes and never get to wash those clothes, they do their best to mend it and tend it and take care of it as best they can. But we walk into a wardrobe full of clothing and we just don't have anything to wear. Preach it. Yes. That's our attitude about the things of God too. Lord, what will I put on with you today? What will I allow you to do with me today? What, what, what is acceptable? What will I taste and see that you are good in today? And, and, oh no, Lord, I don't want that fire out. And please give me this over here. Mm. God's calling you to greater. Yes. God's calling you to greater. Yes. Learn to do well, would you? He says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be made as, as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. He goes further. He said, how is the faithful city become a harlot? How did this happen? How did you let this become this way? It was full of judgment, righteousness, lodged in it, and now murderers. The silver has become dross, the wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious, the companies of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. Oh, I'll do it, but what's in it for me? Hey, hey, I'm going to help run the church. Is Pastor going to be there? I really wanted to see this. Who else in the church? Oh, you know, I made that. I mean, that was me. That I made more. Oh, I hope I, the baked potatoes you keep smelling. I, I, I bought for it. <laughs> I got this. When, when you get it, you unwind it because I bought that. I got it. Oh, oh brother, if you knew the sacrament, we, we, got a, we were here at 8 today to put those in the oven. So that you can have it. Praise you better thank God that I am who I am, my God. Come on. Hello. I don't care what you made. I don't care what you did. You didn't do it for me. You did it for God. It may be for me, but you were supposed to do it up to him. You were supposed to glorify him. You were supposed to honor him. You were supposed to shout for him. You were supposed to pray for him. You were supposed to prepare it and do it. You get it in your mind. What can I do for God today? Don't you do it for Pastor. Don't you do it for Pastor's wife. Don't you do it. You do it for the kingdom of God. For the glory of God. That's what it's about. That's what it's for. Almost. Almost. Therefore saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 24. The mighty one of Israel. Ah. There he is. Ah. I will ease me of mine adversaries. That was a double statement. He said, listen, you're going to be for me or you're going to be my adversary? Because if you're my adversary, I'm easing myself of you. I'm easing myself of you. And I'll avenge me of mine enemies. In other words, if you become my enemy, my adversary, I'll avenge you. Go ahead, fight against the Lord and see how you get 
He said, I will turn my hand, in verse 25, upon thee and purely purge away the draw. Notice the word. He just didn't say, I'm going to purge you. He said, I will purely purge you. In other words, there'll be no mention of you in the history books. There'll be no mention of you in the labels. There'll be no mention of you scribed in the rock. I'll wipe out the fact that you were ever there and that you ever had an existence. He said, I'll go through it. He said, and I'll take away all that tin. Tin was a commodity. Tin was a necessity. They drank from it. They covered from it. They protected from it. He said, I'll take everything that's of value. He said, I'll restore thy judgment as at the first. In other words, as if you were never my people. I'll restore every sin you ever did that I ever forgave. I'll bring it back. We're talking about Israel here. My God. He said, and thy counselors as at the beginning, afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and the sinners shall be together and they shall forsake the Lord. They shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which they have desired. And ye shall be confounded for the gardens that you have chosen. They wanted the bigger things, but you just wanted the garden. My God. Why is it we want the garden of plenty? We want the garden of perfection. We want the garden of purity. We want the garden of all things that are pretty. But we don't want to go where the sewage is and till it up and tie it up and clean it up and make it for God's kingdom. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about your life. What are you hiding behind that door? What have you buried in that plot? Why is it you keep letting the enemy remind you of your sins of the past? Did you repent over it? Did you give it to God? Did you go under the water and the blood? Isn't it under the blood? Isn't it as far as the east is from the west? Yeah. Isn't it in the lake of forgetfulness never more to be remembered? Yes. Preacher, I, I don't know what to tell you. Preacher, I, I think I have. I think I have. I, I can tell you what to do. I can tell you to come up here, get this thing out of the way, and come down here and get in this water and get baptized all over again if you've got to. If you didn't think it was done right the first time, then get up here and get under the water and get under the blood today. Because this is the beginning of where you need to go. Repent, repent, repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Get it under the blood. And then you have an offering when you come up. You have an offering when you come up that's been prepared. Lord, when I come up, I'm getting the Holy Ghost because I'm going to the next place in you. I'm going to perfection. I'm going to perfection. I'm going to perfection. But I've come to prepare an oblation first. An offering that is pure, that has been prepared. My heart, my mind, my soul, my very desire. Lord, I've come to give you my longings this morning. I'm not leaving here the way I can. Oh, but you're the pastor. If you think I came here just for you, you're out of your mind. I came here to get fed today, too. I came here to get my oblations, too. I came here to, 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 to pour out my spirit, too. Stand with me. And the strong shall be as tow. And the maker of it is a spark. And they shall both burn together. But here's the kicker. When you get to that place where God can't take you anymore and he's tired. And he's broken and he's weary and he's frustrated and he's ashamed. He says, none will quench that fire. There's a day coming soon. There's an hour coming. And he'll either say, well done, my good faithful servant.
or he's going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I have never known you. Iniquity, sin, malice, evil. And you're going to look at him and say, my God, my God, my God. Oh, I did good here. I was nice to this person. Listen, nice doesn't get you to heaven. Salvation gets you to heaven. Faithfulness, commitment to the kingdom of God in all of his life. That gets you to heaven. How do you know, preacher? Because Hitler was nice to people. How do you know? I was born and raised in a private nursing home. Betty Nugibauer lived on the Rhine River. Betty Nugibauer also lived in my house to the age of 101. She spoke German because she lived on the Rhine River in Germany during World War II. I lived with history. And Betty Nugibauer could speak English and German. When she was mad, she would curse me in, in, in German. And she would tell me to shut my labouche, my mouth, all the time. Shush a labouche. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She would sit us down and she'd say, when I was a little frog, my parents owned a house along the Rhine River. And as we sat in the house, one day a caravan came and we all came out. And Hitler walked up my steps at my house and turned to face the people and hugged me as a little girl and petted my head. And he gave a great oration of a speech that he was going to make Germany great again. He was going to bring food and jobs and prosperity. And I'm all for making something great as they were. But at that time they were starving. There were people dying in the streets from starvation. There were no jobs. Unemployment was at 38% and rising weekly. It went as high as 69% before Hitler decided to start making war and taking other people's lives to justify feeding. I'll be honest with you, I believe if Hitler brought the nation to their knees and repented. Amen, yes, amen. We wouldn't have had a World War II. Yes. But instead, he hardened his heart and he chose to do evil. Yep. But in that moment, that little girl heard a man saying, Don't worry, baby. Your family won't starve anymore. Your daddy won't lose his house. You won't starve to death like your little sister did. So they all got behind him. So don't tell me how you plan to do good. Because people in desperation still look to evil sometimes for good. Don't tell me how many friends you got or how many people lean on your shoulder or call you for advice. A Christian, when they no longer want to serve God and no longer be faithful, they'll call the world for advice. Instead of calling God or calling the church. That's what they do. When they made up in their heart and mind, then they go looking for all their old friends they had turned their back on to come to Christ. And the world will take them back because, hey, they were just using them before, so they'll just keep using them now. So don't tell me because you're a good person, you're going to make it to heaven. That's not Bible. Yes, Christians are to do good by all people, but there's more to being a Christian than being nice, being polite, and being good. Wow. Amen. Well, I've never done anything bad anybody else. That doesn't mean you're heaven worthy. That meant you were earth worthy. That's 
What oblation are you bringing to the Lord? What I've been preaching is, have you prepared your soul to come up and repent and pour it out to God and say, God, I've been holding on to sin. I've been holding on to the flesh. I've been holding on to the ungodliness. Let me go a step further, church. Will this be the church that can bring an almighty oblation to the Lord? A prepared feast, a prepared offering. That this nation, that the United States of America, will no longer have to suffer the evil of the land. Mark my prophetic words. There's a day coming in this nation when the church will be in our garden and evil will be all around us. If we don't repent and get on board. Does that mean the evil won't come? No, I'm saying the evil's coming. You better get ready for the storm. But what's the alternative? Do you know Daniel lived in a day that he had to live in a time along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Oh, that's right. And they still lived there and, and, and prospered. They were in authority. They were leaders. And they still served God with all their heart, all their might, and all their soul. What are you going to be in the middle of the darkness? Are you going to join it? Or are you going to be the standout that God elevates and uses for His kingdom, for His glory, for His church, for His people? To bring more souls, to bring more heart, to continue. See, the, 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 there's still a great revival happening, but it's going to happen in the midst of darkness. The problem is you're focusing on the darkness, when you should be focusing on the light. So let me back up. It ain't here yet. Well, we see flickers of it. So you're going to wait till then or you're going to bring your offering now that's been purified? You're going to bring an offering now that's been prepared? Today. Today's the day to give it all to Jesus. Yes, Today is the day to pour it out. Today is the day to offer it up. Today is the day to say it's all yours. I'm not putting my hand back in it. I'm not growing it. I'm not receiving it back. I'm giving it all, Jesus. Yes. I will be the example and I will be the child of God. Praise Jesus, yes. But I can't do it without you, Lord. You cannot do I cannot do it without the Lord. So this is the day. Now is the hour.
Let him get him hoarse, church. Come on, cry out, get it all out. We're the church triumphant. Not the church drawn, not the church broken. Not the church wounded, not the church destroyed, but the church triumphant. We'll be successful, but we've got to do it God's way. We've got to start preparing the offering before we come. The offering of our hearts, the offering of our praise, the offering of our worship, the offering of our souls, the offering of our minds, the offering of our flesh. All of us got to go. All of us got to be given. All of us got to be turned over. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
and see that this church that we look is a little place in Charlestown, Indiana sometimes the wrong way. He said, I'll use this church and this people to reach nations. You hear me? I said he's going to use us to reach nations. So we want to have prayer, be in prayer. When it's men's prayer, be in prayer. When it's women's prayer, be in prayer. When it's Father's prayer, be in We've got to be here to do and be about our Father's business. We're going to do this unified. It's not a you thing, it's a we thing. Because it's a his thing. Amen? We're going to do this unified. In Jesus' name. Again, let me say thank you for all that you've done. There will be no service this evening. It's a little bit different than what we normally would. But three weeks in a row, some of y'all look 20 years younger. Some of y'all look 30 years older. Because <laughs> you've been working a lot. We understand that. We, we do. We're not here to wear you out. We're here to get you to heaven. Amen. So, I'm asking a favor. Don't go home and do everything else. Go home and rest. God's not giving you a break for you to go do work. He's giving you a break for you to go rest. Obey what the Lord is at. Don't tell me, well, I had to do it. No, I, no, I get it. And guess what? It'll be there tomorrow. The Lord's giving you an evening of rest. Don't, don't put yourself at a disadvantage of what God's trying to bless you with. Okay. Yes. You know me, I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me. Yes. You do the opposite, and that's between you and him. I ain't getting in trouble. Yes. Okay? 
I love you guys. Brother Walker comes in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.
forbade them not to come unto him, me of for such is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew nineteen verse thirteen and fourteen. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Awesome. They all did a wonderful job. Yes, they yes, did. They did. Good job. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to take up our tithe and offering. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's another extension of our worship. Praise and honor and praise to our King. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity that we have to give to the kingdom of God. Amen. Every, if everyone will, let's say this prayer together. Upon the authority of your word. I have given and shall be given to me. Fresh time shaken together and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. When you receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, Sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved in walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I am blessed going in, I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen, and it is so. Praise God. All is to the highest Church, 
if almost everybody here has got a key. If you need one, this church is available for prayer, okay? Make it a house of prayer. Let's use God's kingdom for His purpose. Yes. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've done here today, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your provision. We ask that you would continue to go before us and lead us and guide us, Lord, in all things, God. Hallelujah. Help us, mighty God, in, in everything and come back into your house at that appointed time. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.